Hey, buddy, you talking to Jim and Matt. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, man. Good to talk to you again. You know, it's funny. We were just talking about your tweet about uh, Demetrius on uh, Saturday, that even if you argued that uh, DJ wasn't a draw, just off the accomplishments alone, he should be worth $20 million a fight right now, legend. It, isn't it, it really is amazing how this guy is the best pound-for-pound pound fighter in the world and just is not the the draw that some of these other guys are. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, just the, the fans not really respecting it. Um, I mean, that uh, Wilson Hayes was, you know, uh, definitely a great opponent, and he he demolished them and then finished them with his submission, which that's his strength. So, I mean, it was pretty impressive. Um, you know, I'd like to see guys like that that are just killing it in the game to be taken care of, you know? Well, I wonder, you know, if it's not respect or if it's just the fact that he's almost an institution at this point. I was joking with Demetrius. We talked to him. I told him he was like U.S. Steel in the sense that you're just there and you're you're the cha- Everyone knows you're almost an unbeatable champion. People take it for granted. And uh, and the fact that he's a gentleman. And uh, if you look, Daniel Cormier, you know, got on the mic and, and started talking some shit. Jose Aldo recently said, do you think, and I want to, because you've been around since, I guess, 2004. Do you think that it has changed? Aldo indicated that when he was coming up, it was a little bit different. Do you think what sells fights and what makes fights exciting now has changed from when you started? Oh, for sure. Um, you know, when when I was coming up, same thing with Aldo. <clears throat> we were always, they were pushing the Rich Franklins, the, the you know what I mean, the guys, the George St. Pierre's, the guys that you know were educated, the guys that that spoke well, um, and, and not guys that were getting into trouble. And, and the reason being is we were still trying to get big sponsors on board and, and and trying to show that this sport's not a bunch of thugs. So respect is a big part of the game. It's it's mixed martial arts. Um, sure. So, you know, sometimes uh, I, I don't mind the crap talking if it's if it's genuine, but a lot of these guys think that, oh, that's what I got to do now. And it, like I'm meeting guys in the gym and they're super nice guys and I go on their social media and I'm just like embarrassed for them. Oh like, no! This is gonna <laughs> make you ask them themselves. No, it's, yeah, it's yeah. true. Because they're trying, because they think it's what they have to do. And I'm like, no, just be you, man. Yeah, it's got to you know, be organic. If you're an asshole, then be an asshole. Yeah. Well, Matt pointed but that out about not, Jose. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's just it's crazy. Do you think Matt? Do you think it was a mistake? Because and again, Aldo, who we love, but he said like that's how you saw fight. Like you're not supposed to say you're not supposed to break that wall. No, it's really bad. It, it, like like Cub was just saying, it's bad when you, especially if you know that it's not the guy. You know it's it's a it's something they're putting up. It's a fake act. Like Conor McGregor, whether it is or not, he's man, he's good at it. He's I great, mean, he's yeah. really good at talking. And sure. again, the guy could fight. You know, it's not like the guy he's talking and he can't fight. But these other guys that 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 really could fight, but they just they don't have that. They just concentrate on the fighting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it does yeah. get embarrassing. And like Jose Aldo, who obviously is, uh, could fight, he, he he basically says like, "All right, now I'm going to just talk trash because that's how you sell fights." But dude, by just saying that, you're ruining it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's like if you tell a girl, "Hey, that dress is really pretty," and she goes, "Really?" And you go, "Well, yeah, I want to fuck you." <laughs> so you're not supposed to admit that. We all know why you said it. <laughs> exactly. You're not supposed Great to say comparison. it. Yeah, you're not supposed to say it. You know what I mean? You got to let people it's believe true. it. And when Aldo did, and again, just to talk about him because of, of this, but when he um, against Connor, I think that he he did something that didn't seem like him, where he kind of got in the ring and he, he mocked Connor's pose, and it was like that seemed so out of character for him. You knew that Connor had kind of gotten him out of his game, and you, it's got to be like you said. I think it's got to be real. And if you see a guy who's one way, and then you go on their social media, yeah, it's just it's, it doesn't feel genuine. It doesn't. Yeah, the other thing about Aldo in that fight too is he never. I I remember this when we fought. He never looks his opponent in the eye. That's right. And you know he's just one of those guys that, you know, doesn't want to give him a face. It's just an opponent, and that's his thing. Um, but he looked him right in the eyes, and he was trying to make that eye contact, and that is not his thing. So why would you? You know, he mentally Connor is the best at just getting people off of their game mentally. Yeah, and now, have you ever had that, too? Because I know that they say when you're angry, you don't fight as effectively. Like, you just don't because you don't think as much. You react with emotion. I think in that fight, Jose ran in much faster than he would have. He wanted a quick knockout. He wanted to hurt him. Whatever he wanted to do, establish himself. And, and it cost him because I think that he just he didn't fight a, a fight that he would have uh, fought normally. Uh, have, you, have you gotten to yeah. that point where somebody's upset you so much or taken you out of your game? Over the, I'm sure you, over these years, it's had to have happened once. Uh, just, just the Jose Aldo fight. And it's not that, that, uh, 
he pissed me off. It was just a matter of everyone saying how good he was and that, um, you know, he was, he was so dominant. So I just wanted to get in his face right away. And, and right off the bat, when the fight started, he was like backing up. And so I was just like trying to just, uh, you know, be the guy who did the pressure. And then I walked right into a knee and, and I learned from that mistake. Um, pretty, pretty much from now on, from then on, sorry. Um, every time I get, you know, somebody tries to, to beef with me or make it bigger than it is. It's just like, I, I take that in and I just use that as, as fuel to the fire. It doesn't make me react instantly. Um, it's just that when, when the moment happens where I can give them payback, I'm going to give it to them twice as much. And congratulations, by the way. I don't think we've talked to you since the uh, Duho Choi fight. In- absolutely an incredible fight and an incredible win for you. Uh, that, 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 that's Thank really you. one of the best fights uh, in, in the last yeah, year, easily, if not the best fight so far in the last 12 months. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was a, it was a fun one. Um, and what do you think of, by the way, uh, the, the replay? They're talking about the replay. And again, I'm asking because of the length of your career. And you've seen so many changes and all these new rules about the hands on the ground and, and when you can, uh, you know, uh, putting your hands out with your fingers sticking out. Has any of that affected you at all? No, uh, not me personally. I uh, try to pay attention to the rules. It's hard when, you know, they're, they're constantly changing things and then every referee has like a slightly different description of them. It's like a strike zone. Uh, and Yeah, the strike zone is for one. Um so it's just, you know, it's hard, but, um, you know, that's part of the rules and, and guys need to get good at them and they need to know them. And, you know, I, I think uh, they could do a better job of, you know, really pushing the guys to know them. And you had lost two fights uh, to Frankie and Max Holloway, and then you've won three straight. Uh, what have you done differently in the last three? Was there something you changed in training? Uh, just just trying to train smarter and then... Um, you know, and, and those two losses, I, I was really got hyped up in that title shot uh, thing, and, and it was just an emotional roller coaster, and it really got me away from what was important to me. And it's just about uh, having great performances. And so uh, most of it was mental, and uh, it's made me way stronger of a fighter. Um, and I don't know if we talked to you about this last time, too. Uh, you, you were raised in a very, very interesting uh Way you, you were homeschooled. I don't know if we asked you about that last time. Um, I don't think so. I'm always interested in that too. Like, did that help you or hurt you socially? Do you think when you're a kid? I I always wonder if it makes it harder for kids to socialize when they're homeschooled. Uh, I honestly think it hurt. Um, you know, because I I was home. I started being homeschooled at, at third grade, and then uh, I started going to a public high school, and I was like raised like right in church. And all of my all the kids in my church were all homeschooled, so I only hung out with them. And then when I went to high school, I had a lot of cousins and family that were there uh, on my other side of my family that I hadn't really seen a lot. And they were all kind of hanging with a rough crowd. And I was so, like, insecure of who I was at that point that I, it was just easier for me to be the tough guy and kind of roll with them. And it just kind of led me to a different path, and I was just... Uh, I wasn't really being myself, uh, so I really feel like being homeschooled uh, had its benefits, but socially made me behind on everything. Well, you were involved in, in, in gangs, and it was this also because I, I know that they, uh, you, you were raised with, I guess, uh, an adoptive family because your, your dad had passed away and your mom kind of, uh, it, it was very, very hard for her. So then you were raised with this family, but then you went back to your mom at one point. Yeah, so I was raised, uh, it was my dad's, um, cousin and him and his wife they're very young they, they took me and my brothers in uh for 10 years uh did a great job and uh my life was pretty pretty easy um and then they ended up getting a divorce and my mom had you know been doing well for a long time so we moved back with her and i was at 14 um 13 or 14 and so that was right my freshman year of high school you know public school and uh you know, my mom had seven kids, and so it was, it was kind of a, uh, it was crazy. I moved in to like my mom's house, and there, there was like sometimes sixteen people living in the house. And, oh my god! Uh, in like a three bedroom, so it was like quite a change. <laughs> but uh, 
yeah, so it was just a weird time in my life. That's that's kind of the reason I I went the other way. You know, fighters are always one way or the other, uh, very extreme personalities. So I went from a l- little church kid to a little badass real quick. <laughs> yeah, and you spent some time in a juvenile facility. And did that kind of straighten you out? Like, I, I know that when you got out, you were working with, I guess, what, kids with cerebral palsy, and you were uh, taking jujitsu, and that kind of just kind of set the course of your life into a better direction? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was I was trying to be... You know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it all the way. So I was trying to be, like, a real badass and um, landed me in juvenile hall real quick and did a year. And um, I had a lot of time to think and kind of map how I got there. It's the same thing I do with my fighting career, kind of evaluate, okay, how did I get here? What choices did I make? Um, how, how could I be better? And, you know, that was kind of uh, changed my mindset. And then... Uh, Started going to college when I got out, um, uh, worked with kids with uh, cerebral palsy, autism, um, Down syndrome. I got into that because my youngest sister has Down syndrome, um, and I love her to death. So uh, that's how I got into that. Did that for about four years, and then um, I decided to quit that job and move to Orange County to pursue fighting full-time. So dealing with someone with Down syndrome is, is difficult. I guess it teaches you a lot of patience. Um, you know, when dealing with someone who's uh, disabled? Yeah, um, it depends, you know, on on, on the, the special needs that they have. Um, kids with Down syndrome are, you know, they're, they're usually like the happiest. Uh, they're, pretty, uh, they're pretty easy to deal with. Uh, you just got to give them a lot of attention. I think the hardest kids that, that we had trouble with were kids with autism. Um, they're just their their mind is always changing and they're they they need structure but it's on their terms and uh you have to like you know be on their schedule all the time it's, it's and i would see their parents stress out all the time so it, it's a pretty interesting um you know um thing that kids have it's crazy so no, go ahead. i was no. just gonna say uh this weekend um uh, artem artem labov they pronounce it right labov 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 is that just the way I pronounce my, my yeah. accent? Anyway, uh, tough, tough dude, as you know. But I mean, I, I got you picked as the more well-rounded guy. How do you feel you match up with him? I think it's a great matchup. You know, I know why he called me out. He he's uh, wanting big fights, and um, he wants somebody that'll stand and bang with him. And he knows that that's more my style. So um, I know he's a tough guy. Yeah, he's got great, uh, great coaches, great training partners. So I'm expecting the best version I've seen of him, and uh, it's a five round fight. So uh, he doesn't get taken out very often. So I expect to to beat him up for five rounds. <laughs> well, you're, you're expecting this. You, you, you're not looking for a quick end to this fight. You know it's going to be this is going to be a very difficult fight. Uh, my, I'd love to knock him out early, um, shut him up. But um, you know if it. If it uh, if he hangs in there and because you know obviously he's training his butt off so if he if he's in there and can take it I'll be ready for a five round war. Uh, and what do you think? I mean, we we ask this of a lot of fighters, but it, I mean, you are ranked number four. So uh, where where do you think this uh, where do you think this puts you if you do beat him? Well, it's all about you know over the rankings are there a little bit, but it's also about performances. So I need to go out there. I need to perform. I expect myself to to perform better every time. I feel like I've done that since my um, comeback from my losses. So with the Hakron, the Kawajiri fight, and the Duho Choi fight, I feel like my my performances have been better and better every time. So that's that's all I'm looking for is is uh, is having the best performance, you know, that I've had this uh, in this last string of fights, the best version of myself ever, actually. And then that'll be enough to to get a title fight. And do you th- you must be happy now that the, that the division is finally or they took Connor's belt, so now it's going to be you know Max Holloway against uh, Jose Aldo. There's going to be one champion in the division as there should be. So it's it's got to make you feel good that at least the division kind of makes sense now, and there's no more ambiguity about who's the champion. Is, is you know is an interim champion? It's just going to be solved now. Yeah, I'm super happy for it. I think that fight's going to be awesome. Um, as a fan, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know. Max Holloway, uh, I've been wanting to get a title shot for years, um, but Max Holloway was like, 
won like 10 in a row, kind of ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm happy to see him get a title fight, and I think it's going to be a great fight. Well, you're number four. Frankie is uh, number three, and he's fighting. Uh, Frankie's, right, Frankie's number two, fighting Yair Rodriguez. So there's definitely a chance to move up one um, because either Aldo or Holloway is going to lose, and the loser will probably still stay in the top two or three. So uh, you may be able to move up one, and uh, you know they could uh, definitely look at you for a title shot if you have a good showing. Um, you know, and maybe Frankie doesn't have a good showing. It could absolutely look good for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing is that the rankings aren't everything or the right. number two guy would always fight the number one guy. But I mean, everybody, everybody in the top five has already fought for the title, you know? Um, so and I've been there the whole time and never have. So uh, they can only give one guy so many title fights if they, if they keep falling short, you know what I mean? So you've never fought um, for the title. I didn't, never. I've never fought for wow. a title ever. Wow, that's crazy. He's got close, close though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, his, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a huge opportunity for you to make a statement, Cub. Yeah, that's that's the whole reason I'm training my butt off. I'm nice. I'm not looking past this guy. No. Um, like I said, I need to go out there and and put on my best my best performance yet. Um, people love my last fight, and I need to do better this time. Dude, well, we, we're uh, we're very happy for you. You're an animal, and I and I hope that uh, you have a great fight against uh, Artem Lobov. It's the uh, it's the main event fight, uh, UFC Fight Night Swanson versus, uh, versus Lobov, Saturday, April the 22nd from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, and uh, it's always good talking to you, man. You have a very, very interesting life, and you're an interesting guy. So uh, good luck, buddy, and we'll talk to you soon, okay? Yeah, Cub. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, thanks, Cub. Take care, Cub.